Hello and welcome back to Facebook Live. This is Robert Wallace, Dr. Robert Wallace, and I want to thank you for tuning in. I know we're a little bit late today, 15 minutes late, and I know if you're in the United States right now, you're probably excited about getting out to look at the solar eclipse. Careful of your retinas. As you know, don't look directly at it, but yeah, you're probably excited to get out there. I'm kind of excited to look at, to get out there as well. Uh, but here we are. This is Monday. Thank God it's Monday, 1245. We typically do this every week at 1230 on Mondays. So if you can tune in, this is the place where we answer questions about health, alternative health. We help you solve your chronic health issues that you might have in an alternative way. So if you're somebody who's suffering with a condition, uh, whether it's a named condition or whether they haven't been able to diagnose you yet, you just don't feel well, then alternatives are, are, in my opinion, the best place to look. If you've tried everything else, you might as well look to find the cause, and that's what we do here. Uh, we practice functional nutritional medicine for those metabolic type patients who are suffering with those types of conditions, and that's what we're going to talk about this week and every week as we go forward. So for those people who tuned in last week, we had a, a great amount of views last week as well, and the word is getting out there. If you are watching this and you find value in this, if you can share this video with other people, either on the recorded line or have them come and watch us each week as we are live. Each week we're going to be talking about different health topics uh, that can help you. This is free information. My mission and goal is to help as many people as I can, and one-on-one -on -one we can only help a certain amount. But if we can do this through Facebook Live, we can help a lot more people out there, whether it's through the free information or whether it's from people who really have a complicated puzzle and they need to contact us and we can actually help really get to the bottom of things and get them better. Uh, either way, thank you so much for tuning in. We're real happy to have you. And uh, this week, what we're going to talk about is stubborn weight loss and where to look for the answers or where to look so you can lose weight. So a lot of people, one of the main number one complaint probably in our office is fatigue that people come in with, but I would say a close second would be weight gain. People struggle with losing weight. Uh, it's, it's, obesity is an epidemic. I don't need to tell you that. It's out there. A lot of people need to lose weight and a lot of people suffering with obesity, even children nowadays. So it, it's, it's epidemic, these proportions. And it's really sad because it's not something that's very hard to fix. If people would do what I ask them to do, which most people that come in here do, then they'll lose weight. It's, pretty, it's a pretty straightforward concept. But when you think of weight loss, what do people think of first? All the people who are you know, telling you what you should be doing. It's almost always caloric, right? If you eat less calories than you consume, then you'll lose weight. That's what we're told every day, and that's what pe many people, I'd say the majority of the population, believes that. So if that's the case, and we watch all these you know, shows on TV like The Biggest Loser where people come in and, you know, they go through this rigorous protocol and they lose hundreds of pounds. And the problem with that show is they never show a reunion show for, for that because those people can't maintain their weight. So how many people out there have been on a diet? I'm sure a lot of you have, right? And maybe you've lost five pounds or 10 pounds or 20 pounds, but how successful were you in keeping it off? And then of those people who did go on a diet, there are people who don't lose much weight at all. Maybe a little bit of water weight in the beginning, but there's people who can't lose significant amounts of weight. And if you've tried a caloric deficit in the past, if you've attempted to lose weight and you failed, if it hasn't worked by cutting calories, it doesn't make much sense to try to do that again. Because the real reason behind that, all the studies show that as you lower your caloric intake, your body isn't stupid. Your body is going to lower its metabolic rate just the same way in, in almost exact proportion as your caloric deficit. So if you're trying to cut calories to lose weight and it's not working out, I would, that's not your problem. So it's other places that you can look at to be able to finally achieve some weight loss. And we're going to talk about four different places today on, on a global scale. So we'll talk about these things you know, from a far out, my, from a far out telescope. And as the weeks go by, we'll take different portions of these and we'll get in deeper uh, into much more detail with these and be able to explain how this works. 
So the first place I would suggest you look if you're having a hard time losing weight and you've tried the caloric restriction way and it hasn't worked for you is your thyroid. We have, I'd say about 75% of our patients who come in here have hypothyroidism. And the reason is because a lot of them are really mismanaged out there and they still suffer with symptoms even though their blood work appears normal to the doctors or the small amount of blood work that is run appears normal. Uh, but your thyroid, if that is off, that's like your engine for your car. And the higher your engine revs, the higher your metabolic rate. So there's people with hyperthyroidism. Those people tend to be very thin. People with hypothyroidism tend to be uh, you know, harder to lose weight because the thyroid is having a problem. And there's 22 different mechanisms of thyroid problems that we're going to talk about each week in this uh, weekly Facebook Live that we're doing. Uh, the first one is autoimmune thyroid. That's the most likely one. It's called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. If you've been diagnosed with Hashimoto's, you have an autoimmune condition. And we're going to talk about that a lot. I have an autoimmune condition, and I've been able to navigate this without medication, and that's what a lot of people want to do. So I've done it for myself, and we can do it for others as well. But there could be a binding issue where your you know, thyroid hormone is uh, way too bound to the protein carriers and not enough is able to actually be expressing your genes to, to cause you to have a normal thyroid or normal weight. So a binding issue is one of the things. We could have excess conversion to reverse T3, which is an unusual form of thyroid hormone. And that happens a lot in, in highly stressful conditions. And I think that a lot of people out there are pretty stressed. I know almost the whole country is stressed for sure. Uh, there could be conversion issues. We mentioned that before, where we're not converting our T4 over to T3. And when that conversion issue happens, your blood work will look normal, but you're still going to have thyroid symptoms. And, you know, another one of those thyroid issues is thyroid resistance. Just like any other hormone, like we can have insulin resistance, which we're going to talk about later, you can have thyroid resistance. When those protein carriers, when they're too much of that th hormone has gotten off of the protein carrier and it just is bombarding the cell. When there's too much thyroid hormone, there's thyroid resistance too. So thyroid is number one, and you need to get a full thyroid panel, run a full thyroid panel. Uh, you can look it up on the internet what a full thyroid panel is, but most people are only testing, or most doctors are testing TSH, and maybe if you're lucky, they're going to test free T4. But we need free T4, total T4, free T3, total T3, T3 uptake. We need the thyroid antibodies, which are TPO and thyroglobulin antibodies. You know to be run um, reverse t3 also if i didn't say that we need to run that as well so that's just a that's a real thyroid panel and then in addition to that we need to run some other things which we'll talk about later as well so that's the first organ to look at is the thyroid second one is the liver liver is one of my favorite organs because it does so much and it is so important to the rest of the body um, the liver is responsible for detoxification of things in our bodies and oftentimes People, patients have fatty liver. If you haven't been evaluated for fatty liver, an ultrasound will show that. Um, if you're overweight or obese, it's likely that you have fatty liver. Uh, oftentimes, there is heavy metals. We all have heavy metals in our bodies. You can't drive down the street without being exposed to heavy metals. So our liver gets congested and clogged with those, as well as clogged with different things called xenobiotics. So those are pesticides, herbicides, industrial pollutants, solvents, cigarette smoke, any toxin you can think of can clog up and congest the liver, which can contribute to or create weight gain. So the other thing the liver does is it's going to clear our sex hormones like estrogen. And if the liver is not doing its job, we're going to have the potential to have something called estrogen dominance. And estrogen is a proliferative hormone, meaning that it builds tissue. So, you know, anytime we want to have our hormones have to be in balance. Can't have too many or too little. We have males come in all the time and they want more and more and more testosterone so they can be more youthful. But we want to have a proper balance of hormones. And in the long run, if you have too much of any hormone, there will be resistance. So we want to have a nice balance. The other thing about liver is it's a common place to find stealth infection. Stealth infection could be bacteria, could be viral, could be um, fungal, even parasitic. We go through specific protocols to detoxify people and from every tissue of their body, including the liver. 
And I've had patients who we give them specific remedies and in the toilet they will find liver flukes, they'll find worms. We have pictures of these things that if you're interested we can show you because it is a, a dramatic change when we remove these things from a person's body and when the liver begins to function properly again, weight loss is possible. So liver is the second one, it's a real important one, a big one. The third organ that we would look at would be the adrenal glands. So the adrenal glands produce your fight or flight hormones uh, and many other hormones. Uh, but the one that we'd be specifically thinking about with weight would be cortisol. And we hear on TV, cortisol is the belly fat hormone. Cortisol is also like kryptonite for the thyroid. So if you have excess cortisol, it's going to reduce thyroid effectiveness and you will in essence become hypothyroid because of that excess cortisol. So the adrenals have to be looked at as well. And those are usually a downstream issue, meaning there's a different problem somewhere upstream, whether it's toxic, a toxin or a virus or a bacteria or a parasite, something is causing those adrenals to be um, overworked and become fatigued. And, and those are a good place that we'd look. Again, we'd look at those downstream more than right away. And then the last place I would suggest you look, which is really the most likely place, so probably you should address this first, is insulin. Insulin is a hormone, and you've heard of um, diabetes, because that's running rampant, it's an epidemic as well. Uh, the problem with diabetes is you don't feel it. You don't feel badly when you have it. You might be tired, but uh, you know it's ravaging your insides, destroying your kidneys and your retinas and all your organs, uh, but you don't even really know it until you have blood sugar tested, which is why you should be testing yourself at least twice a year. Uh, but if you have insulin resistance, where you have too much insulin out there, or even if you have, you know, w whether it's mild insulin resistance or, or major insulin resistance, insulin is like the, it's like a prison guard. So if you imagine having little cells, fat cells in your body, and they're like jail, and you're trying to get them out, when insulin is around, insulin is like the prison guard. They're not going to let those things out. So we need to do whatever we can to lower our insulin levels. And the lower our insulin levels are, the healthier that we will be. So periodic fasting is really important. Um, intermittent fasting is important. It's something that I practice. You know, having a fasting time for 16 hours and maybe have an eating window of eight hours or six hours where every day you go through that intermittent fast, which is how my wife and I eat. Uh, you want to give your body a chance to be able to digest and have no insulin in the picture. So needless to say, we want to give up sugar. If you're eating sugar and you're trying to lose weight, then you know it'll never work. It's not going to work that way. You need to get rid of sugar, which also feeds these infections we talked about before. So the best way that we can lower insulin levels is, like I said, is to um, be cognizant of the times that we eat, be cognizant of what we're eating, Give up the refined carbohydrates and the starchy carbs. Give up even some of the starchy vegetables like potatoes and carrots and peas. You know, you, you want to do all you can to have fibrous vegetables and fibrous carbohydrates because the more fiber the product has in it, the less carbohydrate you're eating and the less insulin will be around. So insulin is really, really important. So do that first if you're looking for a strategy to lose weight. Address insulin, try to lower that as much as you can. Uh, and if that doesn't work, then you have a different problem. Your problem is either thyroid, liver, adrenals, or some other portion of your body that's not allowing you to express normal physiology. So all four of those things we just talked about, they all have a common thread, and that common thread is inflammation. So we talked about this a little bit last week, but if we have high inflammation in our body, we're not going to be healthy, or as healthy as we could be without that inflammation. So there is a blood test that I suggest everybody out there gets. And it's called a cardio C-reactive protein, or a high sensitivity C-reactive protein. It's also called a CRP. That should be tested every time you run blood. It's my favorite blood level. If that level is elevated, if it's over one, you have excess inflammation in your body. And there's a problem. And you need to find, become a detective or find a detective to get rid of that inflammation. Because the higher that inflammation is, the sicker you're going to be. Um, and, and the more difficult it's going to be to lose weight, the more difficult it's going to be to have your back or shoulders feel better. All your joints are going to hurt with inflammation. Um, you're going to feel puffy and look puffy. Uh, even if you're overweight, you're going to even look heavier because of that inflammation. 
So get that high sensitivity CRP done. And if it's in a good range, then be proud of yourself. Pat yourself on the bat and address insulin and lower that. But odds are if you have insulin resistance, you're gonna have some inflammation anyway. Okay, so that's my quick overview of these different metabolic factors that can contribute to a person not being able to lose weight. And each week we're gonna go more deeply into each one of these things so we can help solve that health puzzle that you might be dealing with. So I had a question, I had a few questions um, emailed to me from many different places. Uh, one was South Africa. Uh, there was, most of them were in the United States. Uh, but one question was about how we treat patients and what we do here. If you're local, it's real easy. You can come in and we can sit down face to face, look at the records and what you've been doing with other doctors, whether they're other functional doctors or whether they're traditional medical doctors. We look at what's been done for you. We take a complete history Find out what you're suffering with and what your life has been like up to that point. And then we run blood work. We're going to run a full extensive blood test on you that will give us as much information as we could receive from a blood test. Um, we run that and then we look at how we can help you and take steps to improve your health puzzle. If you're not local, if you're someone who is in a different country or if you're in a different state that's too far to, to drive here, we do have people who fly in. but there's no need to do that. We have a distance program that we deal with patients through the internet, whether it's Skype or FaceTime or whether it's just by telephone. Um, I like to see who we're working with and they like to see me as well. So ideally we'd be doing it on, on uh, some form of screen that we could see each other. But we can address all these metabolic things from a distance. And it doesn't matter whether you're having musculoskeletal pain or whether you're having fatigue or Lyme disease or gastroparesis or constipation or you know heart disease it doesn't make a difference we deal and help as many people as we can with different conditions and the first consultation we have can be virtual it can be far away uh, and, and at that point after we look at that case we can decide together if this is a case that I feel like I want to be able to help or I can help and the patient gets a chance to experience how we you know help them as well so that's to answer the question that the person had asked me, yes, that's how we do it, either in person or remotely through Skype or FaceTime or through the phone. So if you're interested in having that, contact our office and, and we can talk about helping you. So that's the end of this week. So next week, I'm going to be on vacation next week. We're going to be in Vermont at a lake house, and we're still going to do this at 1230 on Monday next week. But you'll get to see me not in a, you know, work clothes. You'll meet my family, I'm going to introduce them, and we'll have, we'll talk about something. I'm not sure what we'll talk about there, but uh, we'll at least do a short one next Monday because I want to be able to do this every single week so we can get the word out there. So if you were tuning in and watching this whole thing, I'm proud of you. Great job. Uh, as always, if you like what you're seeing, please like us. Push the like button. If you think that this might be able to help someone who's suffering, share it with them. If you haven't liked our page yet, please like it. We're close to a thousand likes right now. I think we're like 950 something. So pretty excited to get over that 1000 mark. And thanks again for tuning in. I appreciate it. I hope this helps you. I hope it provides value for you. I hope it makes your life better. Uh, and I hope you're able to live uh, a healthy, long, happy life. Thanks again for watching.